Hello, welcome to the Ecclesia Global YouTube channel, your one-stop place for all Christ-centered apostolic messages. And if you are new to this YouTube channel, I would want you to click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified at any point in time that we drop a new video. And I want you to stay calm, remain blessed as you listen to this powerful message from God's servant. Now over to God's servant. You know, when I look around the world, I look around friends, family, sometimes I'm heartbroken. You see the helplessness of humanity. Even if you try and give your all, you still discover it's not enough. The hardship is enormous. The oppression is enormous. Take widows only and see what they go through. You will exhaust everything you have. You can't cater for half of them. Look at orphans. Then look at the abuse in government, in leadership. What is costing people? Just because five people form a cabal in a country. you see over 10,000 people kidnapped. More than 3,000 of them maimed. Maybe liver is pulled out and sold. Head is cut off. Kidney is plunged out. Children are cut out of their mother's womb just because five people form cabal. Looting the money of a nation. You hear of armed robbery cases. Graduates that should be thinking productively. There is no hope anywhere. They have tried six years after graduation. Nothing to do. And they turn to arms. Young ladies with great future. The best they can achieve for themselves is prostitution. And the whole thing is because six people have sat on a government seat. And they, they exhaust one term. They force themselves get another term. And when they finish as governors, they go to become senators. They finish as senators. They become president. And for 20 years, aggregatively, 25 people sell off the heritage of a country. And million, sometimes I wonder how God will judge this world. Because I tell myself, it's not enough to say, I'm sorry the day you will die. In fact, you will not remember to repent. You will go to hell and suffer in the lake of fire. Because of the hell that you have put on people who are on earth. Wicked men. Hoping that before they die, they will say, Lord, I'm sorry. You will not remember. You deny 100 million people from food. Thousands of people kidnapped, beheaded because of your greed. And you think you will now come on your deathbed and say, I believe in Jesus. He died for me. You will not remember. Even if they preach to you, you won't believe. If you don't repent now and change the, the lives of people, you will not, you must test that hell that you put other people through. It breaks my heart. When you see, you know, some of you don't, you, you are not in leadership. When people come to you for counseling, for prayer, and you see broken humanity, you can't tell the number of women that have had miscarriages. Because hospitals have no equipment. And these equipments, monies are allocated. But a useless politician gathers that money, says he's going to Dubai for holiday with his family. And to make things worse, even people who God gives spiritual responsibility are now on the altar stealing from these same people that thought church is the last hope. And then you come to church instead of a pastor to tell you the truth of God's word to grow you up. He's only interested in your money. And the whole gospel from January to December is designed to steal from ordinary parishioners. And so people are in church for 10 years. They are learning nothing. There's no transformation in their lives. At the end of the day, they remain in church because all they know is religion. At least that one gives them hope.
if people don't repent, God will judge soon. But you see, we can't remain in lamentation. So we must find out what to do to change our lives. This is why Jesus, in his benevolence, grants each and every one of us access to authority. And so you must understand your authority as a believer. And you must know how to wield it. Because unfortunately, evil is in your world. Evil is around you. And evil has even come into you. You need to know what to do in order to push evil away from your life and walk in the victory that Christ has procured you. The reason we talk about restoration is because men have wandered into the side of the other government. And so that government has stolen things from them. So when you encounter Christ of necessity, the things stolen from you must be restored. This is the parallel that exists between light and darkness. While light furnishes you with life abundantly, darkness steals from you until you are destroyed. And so when a Christian comes into relationship with Christ, he needs to understand that certain things were stolen from him and he must insist to have them back because in Christ all things become his and so he must insist to experience all things because you can have all things legally in Christ but experientially you may not be experiencing it the power of restoration is to make sure that you experience all the things that are yours in Christ because the way the thief steals from you is that he covers a lot of mileage in your heart it's in your heart that you lose ground. So bitterness is a channel through which he steals. Malice is a channel through which he steals. Ignorance is a channel through which he steals. When you are insisting in restoration, you are first of all recovering the grounds stolen in your heart so that you can experience the things that are yours in Christ that the thief has established dominion over. It is on that basis that you will live life to the full. And so I, 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 I summarized the operation of the thief as darkness. Because it's darkness that reflects his being, it's darkness that reflects his government, and it's darkness that reflects his operation. Now, it's important to let you know that there are two dimensions to darkness. When we are talking about darkness here, we are referring to the darkness that has to do with the thief, evil and its government. Now, in Exodus 20 verse 21, Moses was talking and he said, and God stepped and he said, God stepped and Moses rather went into the deep darkness where God was. Moses stepped into the deep darkness where God was. In 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 12, Solomon said, the Lord had said, I shroud myself with darkness. So God dwells also in deep darkness. But when we talk about this type of darkness, we are not talking evil. We are talking mysteries. The mystical dimensions of God. So that the knowledge of God cannot be exhausted. So the type of darkness that is attributed to God are the mysteries of God. That makes God exclusively omniscient amongst all creation. This is why the Bible said, if the princes of this world had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So when you think you are trying to destroy the works of God, you are advancing it. It's a type of darkness. God operates in mysteries. This type of darkness is for our glory. The mysteries of God that makes the, pro the programs of God unknowable until he reveals it to you. This is an advantage to us. So when we talk darkness, don't get confused. You might read your Bible, you go to First Samuel, you go to First Kings, and you start hearing that God dwells in darkness. And you are wondering, does God have business with the devil? That order of darkness speaks of the mysteries of God. But the darkness I'm talking about here tonight is the devil and his government. You need to understand that there are forces you will require to counter his oppression so that everything stolen from you can be restored. Because these beings are organized. Make no mistakes about it. Many Christians undermine the devil and his oppression. That's why they have problems. Paul said, don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. This is not an attempt to exhort him, but this is to fortify you with knowledge so that you have an advantage. If you undermine him, you'll be shocked what he's capable of in your life. Darkness 
is well structured. This is why the believer must be fortified with spiritual weapons to overcome darkness. Are you following this? When you are dealing with darkness, there are two principal things you will find. Number one is that darkness is separated into ranks. Not every demonic being or not every demonic operation is at the same energy level. There are darknesses that operate only at the frequency and the jurisdiction of individuals. They don't have the clearance to operate beyond individuals. The Bible speaking in Matthew 12, 43 and 44, it says when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, it goes about in dry places looking for where it will inhabit. He said, if he doesn't find any, he didn't say he goes and enters a territory. He doesn't have that jurisdiction. There are spirits that control territories. But there are spirits that their jurisdiction is only in men. So if they can't find men, they are stranded. All they will be left with is dry places of torment. So what they will do is that they will have to return to that man. Because of necessity, they must be in a location. And so as they return to that man, he said, if that man is clean, but not filled, he said, that spirit will bring seven other wicked demons. What do you mean by clean? He has encountered Jesus. He has received Christ. He is born again, but he has not been fortified with knowledge. You know what Jesus said? He said, that spirit will come with seven more wicked demons. And what he will do to that man will be worse than the state he was before he ever met Jesus. How can a man encounter Jesus? Demons are cast out of him. He receives life and you say his state becomes worse because darkness has the power to jeopardize your existence. And then there are darkness or demons, devils, princes that rule over territories. So what they do is that they come to exact dominion over a territory. They are not interested in men. You know why? They are not disembodied. They have bodies. These ones are not demons. They are fallen angels. So they don't need to possess a man to have a body to function. All they needed was the authority of man to have legitimacy over his jurisdiction, over his territory. These ones are not looking for bodies. They are looking for territories because they are princes. So their obsession is territorial, not men. Because if they take territories, they will not possess one man. They will create institutions and systems that will enslave men and generations. Those type of darkness are higher in authority than the ones that possess individuals. You study your Bible, Daniel chapter 10, verse 20 to 21. The Bible said, Daniel began to pray, seeking deliverance for Israel. And suddenly, answers released from heaven from verse 12. But the answer never met him for 21 days. And you know what? When Gabriel showed up, he said, the prince of Persia withstood me for 21 days until Michael the archangel was sent to come and support me. So the prince of Persia is not looking for a man to possess. He's looking for Babylon to exercise government over. He's a territorial prince. So you may be born again, but if you enter Babylon, you'll be shocked that corruption will enter you. You will come under another influence. You may not be possessed by a demon, but you will not know why you come for few purpose. If you study Isaiah 19 verse 3, you will hear of the spirit of Egypt. Why Babylon corrupts? Egypt enslaves. That's why you find many people doing what they don't like. They are Christians, but they are under the influence of a territorial spirit. Now, because of the influence of that spirit, they will not fulfill purpose, and they don't know why. So you see, a prophetess who is a mighty seer is yet a prostitute. You see, an apostle who should shake nations is a drunkard. And you are wondering what is going on. He's under the influence of darkness. A prince that rules territories. That's the challenge many Christians have. And so when we are talking restoration, we are talking with an understanding that we know the operations of darkness and we are not just saying God should give us what was taken from us, but to give us authority to operate above their influence. Do you know there are many people in Abuja today who live fake lives? Very fake because the darkness operating in this land is to put pride in people so that they walk and create impressions, not make impact. And even churches are creating impressions in Abuja and not making impact. Because of darkness. So you can even be a church, yet you are under that influence. Instead of winning souls, instead of praying and making impact, it's all about packaging. Acting as if all is well. 
whereas nothing is happening. But you just want to appear big before people. It's darkness at work. That person is enslaved. That church is enslaved. And that's the crisis of our generation. And then there are darknesses that control generations. You know, people from the age of 11 to 27, 28 are called Gen Z. Their God is their phone. They wake up with it and they sleep with it. That's why you see that the rate of pornographic addiction is on the high. Because it came with that intelligence. It will be difficult when you find a Gen Z who love God. Thank God for that person. Most of them are living in deep secret sin. Deep from masturbation to perversion to immorality because the devil has put their grave in their hands. So the grave is no longer dark, it's handled. The phone of many people is now their grave because there are princes that are interested in a generation. And before Gen Z mature, there's already Gen Alpha who are already ahead of their phones. They are looking for what they can talk to. The phone is too slow for them. So a boy of one year, four months, can open an Android phone and search anything he's looking for. He doesn't even know how to talk yet. But he has a superior intelligence to the current operation. That is why the growth of AI is rapid. Because they need computers they can talk to. They need animated and augmented reality to work in. So nowadays, they create goggles that you wear that takes you into a virtual world so that you participate. It's not enough to look. You want to participate. That's the realm they are working in. You think those intelligences were not affected and inter interrupted by spirits because they are spirits that are interested in generations. That's the level of their authority. So why some affect individuals, others affect territories, others affect generations. So when we are talking restoration, we don't just need restoration for men. We need restoration for generations. Look at this generation. Full of knowledge, no power. Because of arrogance. We know all the mysteries in the world. No power. Because there is a force that puffs the mind. And everybody thinks they've arrived. Whereas what our fathers did 30 years ago, we've not scratched it. But we think we have arrived. Because there is a territorial influence and there is a transgenerational influence. So we need restoration. Not just for individuals, but for generations. And our generation is in urgent need of restoration.